everyone. I hope you're having a good day wherever you are in the world. My name is Savannah and today in this Planet Zoo speed build, we're back in River Rock Zoo building a penguin habitat. Um, I know our previous videos on River Rock Zoo were our polar bear habitat and I promise I haven't forgot about it. I've just really not been motivated to do an interior guest viewing area. So I kind of put it off by doing a penguin habitat instead. If you're new here, River Rock Zoo is one of our sandbox zoo projects where we're creating a very modern North American styled zoo. Um, the feel for River Rock Zoo is definitely that it has a lot of funding, a lot of money, um, maybe is a newer zoo and therefore we're just kind of building whatever whatever we want. Anything and everything that comes to our mind uh, is what I have uh, been going with. I've been using a lot of modern architecture reference pictures to come up with various buildings throughout the zoo and I'm pretty happy with how it's turning out so far although we are kind of nearing an end, kind of wrapping it up. Um, we're doing this kind of uh, colder weather arctic section of the zoo um, and that'll probably be the last area that we complete um, aside from pieces here and there like wrapping it up and and finishing off some unfinished bits throughout the zoo and then there'll be uh, a tour at the very end and at the very very end it'll all go up on the steam workshop for you guys to to check out and to play with so if you want to check out the zoo from the very start um there is a playlist on the channel um all of the speed builds that are encompassing in river rock zoo are all there if you want to get caught up so as I mentioned before, we're building a penguin habitat today, which is something I've wanted to build for a while now, actually. Um, this habitat specifically right now is, as I mentioned, outside of our polar bear habitat and is part of that Arctic cold weather area. Um, I envision it having the polar bears. I think I'm going to do the snow leopards um, and maybe the Arctic wolves, a couple more implied habitats, and that's about it. Um, and when I say a couple more implied habitats, I mean very, very small implied habitats. I have a couple other species that are good zoo species that we don't quite have in the game yet. So um, I'm, I'm going to kind of try to implement those as well. Now, penguins are something that I've frequently seen people uh, building for in zoos because they do seem to be a very common zoo animal and, and probably a very commonly uh, wanted or asked for animal as well. So I'm no different. I really do or would like to see penguins in the game. And I took a lot of inspiration on this habitat from places that I have visited, namely um, SeaWorld in San Diego. They have a, a huge penguin habitat that's all indoors, but they also have an outdoor penguin habitat. And then a lot of their habitats that are outdoors um, are, are kind of structured this way. And I'll get to what I mean in just a minute when we start actually building the um, structure of the habitat. The very first thing I had to tackle on this habitat was the water. And I will say it gave me quite a struggle. And as I continued building, I do wish I would have added just a little bit more water considering that it's a penguin habitat. Um, but it was such a pain and such a struggle for me to get where I wanted it to go. Um, once you start building, really, you can't go back and change the water. You've got to do that kind of first and foremost. And I really didn't feel like spending hours kind of readjusting and, and putting it uh, or improving upon it or to make it more. So there is a, a swimming section in the front. I would have liked it to be a little bit more, but because it is an implied habitat, I felt it was okay to leave it. My idea specifically for this habitat, um, I did a little bit of research on penguins because I know there are a lot of different species of penguins and everybody thinks of emperor penguins uh, right off the bat, you know, the big lumbering uh, chubby little guys uh, that walk around. But I thought that this being a North American zoo and it being an outdoor habitat, so something that the water temperature can be controlled but the outdoor atmosphere can't be controlled all that well, I went with thinking that this would be a chin strap penguin habitat. Now, if you don't know what a chin strap penguin is, I'll try to put a picture of one up on the screen right now. Um, but they're the cutest little things and they, they have a little chin strap. They have a little black stripe going under their chin, almost as if the, the black on their head is kind of strapped on um, and goes with them wherever they go. Um, they're cute little penguins, but I specifically chose them because they are found in the Arctic Peninsula. So the, the 
northern part of Arctica, Antarctica, um, where the the weather is described as being a lot more mild. And I laugh when I say mildest because I think of Antarctica as being uh, very cold all the time. And so by mild, I mean like the warmest it ever gets around January time would be about 34 to 36 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, it's about one to two degrees Celsius. And the coldest it gets on average, uh, which is about June or so, is about negative 15 to 20 degrees Celsius. Celsius, and that's about five to negative four degrees Fahrenheit. So obviously still pretty cold. It is still an Arctic, um, Arctic environment, um, but maybe one where they could be a little bit more tolerant of warmer weather. Um, I know there are coastal penguins, but I wanted to make this one um, specifically part of the Arctic area, and I didn't feel like there's some uh, penguins that live off the coast of uh, South America um, and, and stuff like that, and I, it didn't quite fit in the area because we're doing a, an Arctic area, cold weather area. Um, so yeah, so I felt that those penguins would fit uh, very well in this area. I also did a lot of thinking um, while I was trying to come up with um, what I was going to say for this video and kind of think about the voiceover. And there's been a lot of discussion with Planet Zoo recently over um, some concerns and, and some areas where the game is lacking. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love the game. I'm still having a blast building, I'm still having a blast playing it. Um, but I don't disagree with some of the concerns that other creators have, other players have. So it's really gotten me thinking recently um, what I enjoy out of the game and then also uh, my opinions on the things that I think are lacking. And there seems to be a general consensus where some of the educational points may have been missed with the game as far as, you know, tour guides and um, custom billboards and things like that because zoos really are all about education. That's kind of the purpose um, in how they help conservation is not only helping the animals, but help educate the public because the public are the strongest uh, weapon, I guess, in the fight against conservation or for conservation that we have. And if the public is educated and, and wants to help fight for these animals, then we get a whole lot further with that. And being somebody that works in the animal welfare industry and am a huge supporter of supporting conservation efforts and things like that, one of the things that's most important to me is the animals, is the information about them. So um, I plan to go forward and focus a little bit more on the animals in my videos uh, going forward forward. So hopefully you guys will enjoy that. Um, I want to give you guys just a little bit of information on the animal, the species, stuff like that. Um, so that's why I kind of delved into this a little bit further as far as picking a species of penguin, um, talking about their environment and, and stuff like that. And you guys know, if you've been here for a while, I do love playing uh, with a realism lens, so to speak, in mind. So all the builds that I do, I try to think about what they would really be like in, uh, in in an actual zoo. So, you know, this area back here that I just got started on is kind of like the, the keeper enters the area and then there's some poles in front of it. So the penguins can't get to that area, but this is kind of like an in the habitat backstage area, if that makes sense. Um, I've seen a lot of this when I Googled penguin habitats where, um, you know, they're, they're generally very friendly animals as far as I can tell when keepers are working with them, but they, they just need this kind of barrier to keep them back. Um, they're very, very messy animals and very stinky animals. I know that for sure. Um, so everything back here is rock, is concrete, stuff that can easily be hosed down, easily cleaned by the keepers. Um, so keeping all of that in mind. Um, I do a very, very small kind of backstage house or backstage building for the penguins, but I don't really do any interior with it because I wasn't quite sure one, what it would look like, and, and two, um, because it's not an actual real habitat, I didn't have to incorporate a keeper hut or anything like that. So I just chose to keep it very plain and simple with this little gate, um, this barrier, and this kind of in the habitat backstage area. Um, so I hope you guys like that. I hope you guys like the direction that I want to go with that. Um, I will say, because I kind of just got this idea 
as of yesterday and it's Thursday, I'm recording this for the video to go out tomorrow on Friday, I didn't get a whole lot of opportunity to look into like penguin facts and, and stuff like that like I had wanted to, but it is something that I want to try to incorporate uh, going forward because animals um, I find it very interesting and um, it's one of the reasons why I enjoy the game so much, which is also one of the reasons why I want the education aspect to be a little bit more important in the zoo. Other than that, you're going to see, um, we're going to finish up this little gate thing here and then get to lots of rock work. So this enclosure does have a lot of rock work, like I said, um, being easy to clean, but also just kind of indicative of the chinstrap penguins environment. They do spend a lot of their times on icebergs and things like that floating on the Arctic Peninsula. So um, this isn't necessarily uh, icebergs in the middle of the water, but just lots of rock surfaces. You know, they're not going to be in highly foliaged areas or anything like that, because like I said, they are spending their time on these icebergs on the ice, stuff like that. Um, the quote unquote snow or ice that I put down right now <laughs> the idea is that you know it could either be a fake or a simulated snow um or it could be fake snow that they kind of pump in seasonally when it is colder things like that um but just trying to keep in mind like the penguins wouldn't have a whole lot of plants or anything you'll also see you know i did want to add some green because i do think that that plants make a whole big difference in anything that you're building just for uh, different textures, lots of color, stuff like that. So I did add these kind of raised areas and on either side there's the concrete walls that are raised up. So the penguins obviously couldn't have access to that, um, but it allows me to add some, some foliage uh, for some color and some variation and things like that. Moving on to the outside. So this is where I get to the outside of the habitat. The inside of the habitat is pretty much done now. So I'm just going to frame off this glass area here, the glass viewing area. Um, you can see that it's got like the double, um, double barrier. So, you know, yes, in this case, the guests can come up and put their hands on the glass, but I imagine it being very thick glass. Um, and then it's got the railing, you know, just to kind of help offer some sort of barrier with it. I do struggle here for a minute thinking that things look level and they're not level, obviously. And then I realize that the barrier's not level, so I have to go back and fix it. But once I get that handled, it was very, very easy. Um, one thing that I have already built that I built off camera, um, because I forgot to record it, uh, is a shade structure. So I tweeted out a picture, a sneak peek picture of this a while ago uh, with the shade structure that I made out of art shapes. Now the shade structure I was wanting to do out of some sort of canvas or fabric or something like that, but we just didn't have the pieces in the game or at least we didn't have the pieces that I could think of in the game. So I ended up making it out of art shapes, which I think looks okay. But again, it goes back to me taking a lot of reference from um, places like SeaWorld who have lots of coverings for their uh, habitats. And then I extended it out into the area where the guests are to kind of make it feel like the guest is going into the area with the penguin, um, you know, getting kind of really emerged in their habitat, stuff like that. So I'll put those up a little bit later. You'll see they'll kind of pop in, but I, I did build those off camera. Here I'm working on a little bit of education because again, wanting to bring more education into my builds. Um, so this is kind of a an iceberg map, um, kind of something that shows what their habitat would look like in the wild. And it's just kind of like one of those diorama tables where you can walk up and yeah, you can put your hands on it and things like that. Um, I do change it a little bit from this first iteration, um, but that's kind of the idea is you can walk up. It'll talk about how icebergs are shrinking, um, maybe a little bit about the, uh, the damage that it's doing to their habitat or doing to their lives uh, as far as losing their habitat, but something that, you know, kids could walk up and walk around and really look at. Now, I do add a couple custom pieces in here and I actually make my first art shape animal. I made an art shape penguin. 
um, which I'm pretty proud of. I think it looks pretty good. So you guys will see that a little bit later. But again, just trying to bring a little bit more education and because we don't have these things in the game and I really wish we did, I'm doing my best to kind of come up with what I think they would look like. What I would really, really love to see from Frontier is to see billboards. Um, you know, I wasn't much of a coaster player, a planet coaster player. I did play and I am trying to get back into it, but I never recorded any videos or anything like that. Um, but they had custom billboards where you can go into Photoshop and, and create, you know, graphics to put on them. And I think that that would just be such an easy thing to implement into Planet Zoo and such a needed thing. You know, we could actually put text on there. We could actually put animal information on there. I think it would just be super beneficial. Um, so I'm hoping that, that that comes along sometime soon um, or eventually because I would just absolutely love to see that in the game. It's probably one of my top things that I would say I want to see in the game. So just finishing this little table up here by putting a little bit of a railing on it and then a little bit of a step up um, so that you kind of step up onto this little platform um, to look at the table and then I do put a little bit of a railing fence thing that I'm gonna work on here. I just make it out of glass and then these new world fence pieces um, just for a little bit of detail. And then I originally wanted this to be kind of out in the open where you could walk all the way around it. I end up scooting it all the way up against the concrete wall on the other side of the habitat there. I think it looks pretty good over there. Um, and then I can add uh, another little educational board right next to it to kind of complete the area. Now, in this build, the guests aren't gonna be able to go up onto all of this concrete. There's not paths run under it. I don't know if you saw in the very beginning, I kind of tested how close I could get a path and because of the water, I couldn't get a path close at all. And again, because it's an implied habitat, I really didn't feel like it was necessary um, to, to get paths to work. You can see I was trying to put a path there because I actually wanted a bench up against that area, but it, it just wasn't gonna work. I originally grabbed an education board thinking like, oh yeah, I'll set it to penguins. And then I completely forgot that penguins aren't even in the game and that's not possible, which is when I then go on to do this. And you'll see I'm gonna create a backdrop for an actual education board, um, one of the conservation boards in the game. And then I end up moving that, um, moving it all around. I actually move it a few times to kind of get the, the overall layout done and, and um, complete, but just kind of a little border for this education board um, there which ends up going to the other side. You can also see that, like I was talking about before, I lowered the shade structure. Um, I kind of doubled it, flipped it around so that it covers the entire enclosure. Again, the idea being that these would be colder species. Um, so even though it's in North America, just giving them as much shade as possible. And then maybe they could put some cooling or it would help the fake snow stay in place, something like that. Um, but extending that out away from the enclosure kind of helps bring the guests into the area with with the animal. Um, so that's kind of the reason for that. Instead of just, I originally had it just covering the rock area and I think that this gives it a really good look. Um, so then adding a couple benches, even though the guests can't go up there and then a trash can, just kind of things that I think would be up on this platform area. But overall, just keeping it very open and very clean because it would just, you know, people would just walk around and look at the penguins and stuff like that. You know, they could let their kids go up to the glass while the adults sit on the benches or something like that. Um, I'm starting here on a custom sign and I actually found a reference picture for this one, which was measuring the height of a bunch of different penguins uh, compared to a human. And I was super ambitious. I sat down, I go, I'm gonna do it. This is really easy. Um, it's just a lot of shapes. Yes, the penguin's gonna be hard to make with the art shapes, but it's okay, I can do it. So I laid out all the basic steps. So like those squares on the right are supposed to be the height markers and each line is a different increment of feet measuring how tall the penguin is. Then I get to starting on the, the art shape penguin and I'm very happy with how it turned out. This in reality took me a while and by the time I was done with the art shape penguin, I was completely unmotivated to make an art shape human and other various size art shape penguins. So I kind of shrink down the sign and I make it a little bit smaller. Um, still keep the overall look of it and things. Uh, you know, I don't, it can still talk about the height of maybe chin strap penguins in general. Um, but that was the story why this is gonna start so big and you'll see later that it kind of shrinks down. 
Um, so, uh, like I said, I'm very happy with this art-shaped penguin. It was the very first art-shaped animal thing I ever tried to make, and I, I look at it and I see a penguin, so hopefully you guys look at it and see a penguin too. Um, but this is just one of the two custom signs uh, that I end up making for the area, all in this kind of blue and yellow black kind of color scheme to kind of go along with the area. Um, those circles and things are all from the reference picture. They had uh, information in the different circles and you can see this is where I'm cutting it down and going, yeah, no, I really don't wanna make any more art shaped things, uh, at least in this sitting, I'm kinda done with that. So I kinda shrink this all down and make it more of a, a, a horizontal, or not a horizontal, a vertical sign um, where it's skinnier going up. Uh, than it is wide and uh, I'm pretty happy with that. This I end up putting over by the Arctic iceberg table and then moving those other signs like I mentioned before. There's a little bit more time left in the speed build um, and I'm gonna go ahead and leave you to enjoy that. Thank you so much if you've made it this far in the video. If you're able to comment, leave a like and subscribe for more. I'm gonna be working on the in interior of the polar bear habitat very, very soon, or at least the guest viewing area. Um, and then I've got a couple other things in the works as well. If you've seen, I've tweeted out uh, sneak peeks of a dingo habitat that I'm working on that I'm pretty excited about. And I do overall have lots of ideas. I'm very fortunate in the sense as a content creator, I actually have a lot more ideas of things to build than time I have to build. Um, and that is an issue that I think a lot of creators are running into um, because of lack of new DLC, lack of new additions to the game, things like that. So I do have quite a few ideas um, and I, I'm not kind of giving up on Planet Zoo just yet. I do just hope that um, we do see some additions to the game that the community is desperately, desperately asking for. Thank you so much for being here and until next time, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!